the abundance of sunshine, the tropical rain showers, all blend together to create a pleasant climate in Uganda, an idyllic place to live. It produces a resource-rich environment that provides materials with which to put up shelter for an increasing population. When thinking of housing in Uganda, therefore, one is clearly spoiled for choice in style. From traditional styles that date from pre-colonial times when artisans crafted houses with straw, like this international heritage site, the biggest grass-thatched hut in the world, to houses that cater for the contemporary needs, to the tastes of current trends and modern aesthetics. Western influence in architectural style of housing was first introduced in the late 19th century for colonial civil servants. Technology for this purpose was essentially adopted from the United Kingdom and other British colonies. Built on demarcated plots, such housing was concentrated in residential areas. This was soon to be followed by Indian quarters in urban areas based on the Indian bazaar, shops and residence concept of the Indian origin. As the country continues to be more urban, you notice more styles and influences in housing than ever before. The country's population is currently estimated at 30 million and is projected to reach 77 million by 2035, while 16% of which will be urban dwellers. The current housing stock stands at 5.28 million housing units with an average household size of 4.7 persons. There is a backlog of 612,000 housing units if every family is to be housed comfortably. The urban areas have a total housing stock of 700,000 housing units with a backlog of 160,000 housing units compared to the rural areas with a stock of 4.58 million housing units and a backlog of 458,000 housing units. This creates an immense opportunity for investment given that the population of Uganda is growing at an annual rate of 3.4% per annum. There's an annual growth in national housing demand of 419,000 units of which 84,000 and 335,000 housing units are in the urban and rural areas respectively. The capital city Kampala alone requires a total of 34,000 units annually in order to meet the need for population increase. In Kampala alone we have a backlog of 100,000, approaching 100,000 houses. We are promising to build less than 10,000 in the next five years. You know, so in the next five years, we can't take away the backlog as national housing. No single developer can take away that backlog for Kampala alone. Uganda, therefore, takes development of housing as key for development. Housing plays a very important role in the, in the, in the, in the growth of an economy. It's a national asset and it provides a, all of those benefits to a household that they enhances their status and their productivity and thus the overall contribution to the economy. Land in Uganda is owned by the people. But to encourage housing development, the Uganda Investment Authority, a one-stop center for all information on investment in the country, links investors intending to acquire land to develop housing and Ugandans that are looking for a buyer or someone to lease land to. That cuts on costs that an investor would incur and eases the procedure of land acquisition. We are working on improving the land registry, the titling, uh, computerizing it. But in the short term, we at the UIA have a one-stop shop. So we have someone from the land office who sits here and is able to quickly uh, process the documents as required through the various offices. Development of large housing estates in order to catch up with increasing demand is the current drive steered by private investment due to positive government policy. 
development has full support of government in order to create a vibrant housing environment in which public resources are put in place to support policy measures that encourage private participation in housing development. It has seen the growth of the housing construction sector, new real estate developers entering the arena and existing ones scaling up their operations. People are getting jobs. Every year we are attracting within our companies at least 50,000 jobs. So Ugandans are working, they have regular employment and the banking sector has grown. So they now have access to mortgage facilities. So that combination of having a job and being able to access a mortgage has made the, the, the housing sector boom. The developers are empowered by the Condominium Act of 2001 to develop high-rise and other sectional properties as a tool for delivery of mass housing development in Uganda, catering for the needs of the fast urbanizing city. Construction in Uganda gives developers a competitive advantage because of the abundance of natural resources as sources for construction materials, as well as an open market that allows importation of other materials into the country with ease. Some construction materials are also produced by the local industries. Cement is produced from two factories that have invested in the cement production in Uganda. Clay tiles that give rooftops their colorful finish are produced from the same materials that make bricks for wall construction. National Housing and Construction Company is a pioneer housing developer in Uganda. Since its establishment in 1964 as a government-owned company, it has built over 2,300 executive flats, masonettes, and bungalows in the capital city Kampala and in other major towns across Uganda to cater for the various housing requirements in Uganda. Unique development approaches like this one spearheaded by a homegrown housing developer, Akrite Projects, take on virgin, largely undeveloped land in the city's neighborhood to set up eco-friendly housing developments like this one, only a few kilometers from the city center, Kampala. Blending the concept of natural resource conservation while creating self-sufficient developments outside the current city, they hope to create an environment that is suitable for those willing to acquire houses as well as foreign visitors who want to experience a Ugandan home stay. Luxury apartments that suit the needs of short-term stay are being put up in upmarket neighborhoods of the capital city Kampala to cater for the needs of traveling business executives and extended vacations. Like these fully furnished apartments, only 10 minutes from the city. They are the ideal escape from the city hustle and bustle while keeping conveniently close to the commercial center. To ease the process of acquiring housing, the Ugandan government made an injection of 27 billion shillings, an equivalent of 13 million US dollars, into a pioneer mortgage company to augment the now emerging mortgage market. Most houses before then had been planned and built using personal savings, often leading to delays of projects which would lead to capital being held in incomplete structures. The key role we really played was to provide uh, a medium between the buyer and the developer. The buyer who wanted to own a house but didn't have enough savings, couldn't raise out the money immediately. And the developer who wanted to get out of the stock of housing, uh, sell it and start new developments. That is the major role we played over the 40 years who were the sole uh, provider of mortgage finance. The mortgage market continues to grow with the now vibrant financial sector that has seen an entry of both local and international financial institutions financing house acquisition. Today we offer up to 80 percent in terms of financing for the buyer. We offer the period of 20 years to the buyers to pay, uh, pay over and as I said we are also ready to go into partnership with the developer and arrange with the buyers a tripartite agreement where as construction goes on, the buyer will sign a contract enabling us to pay portions of the money to the developer 
as the housing units or the estate comes up. The housing finance company of Uganda has now turned into a fully fledged bank. Primarily before that, we were just a savings bank and we had another class of people who are saving for the future over a period. But now with that combination, the individual is able to come to one area, get a mortgage as and when he or she wants, or save if one wants to save over time, or do business if one wants to do business, both for short term. And the other people we are targeting and those who are doing construction won't develop a construction loan for them because that's what has been lacking in our market. Uganda has invested heavily in education, which ensures availability of skilled professional manpower. I have over 30 universities and uh, we have good architects and good engineers uh, and good, very skilled workers. So one would get the quality of uh, estate that one wants to put up uh, with using the local manpower in Uganda. The revenue body, Uganda Revenue Authority, works in tandem with other government departments to support the development of housing in its taxing policies on real estate purchases. We've had a, a very favorable tax regime in respect of housing that a value added tax was reduced from 18% to 5%. That is an incentive for the housing sector. Overall, the environment is, 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 is quite favorable, considering uh, even the stability and the economic growth.